Hello, my name is Jonathan Boshin, and welcome to another edition of the FCAT South County Spotlight. On this edition, I have four spotlights for you pertaining to our South County community. On Monday, April 22nd, work began on repainting the steeple of the historic Sunderland Congregational Church. The CPA project, which was approved of by the town during the annual Sunderland Town Meeting of 2023, is being carried out by the Robert Morgan Company, a company founded in 1906 that specializes in restoring and maintaining church steeples around New England. The project, which requires scraping the old paint off of the steeple and painting several coats of paint onto it, is estimated to take several weeks to complete. Once completed, the freshly painted steeple will inject new life into this historic town landmark. Speaking of Sunderland Annual Town Meetings, the 2024 Sunderland Annual Town Meeting was held on the evening of Friday, April 26th at the Sunderland Elementary School Gymnasium. An estimated 90 people came out and voted on 18 different articles. The meeting warrant was dedicated to Thomas Fidekevitz, who served as a Sunderland Select Board member from 1999 to 2023. While all of the articles were approved of by the town, at least three were very contested and generated much discussion. These three articles were Articles 9, 10, and 12. Article 9 dealt with amending the zoning bylaws pertaining to storage battery facilities for solar power. Article 10, another zoning bylaw amendment, dealt with structural conversion. The main focus of this article seems to have dealt with a property in Sunderland, which once served as the former Cozy Corner nursing home and allowing a developer to renovate it into housing. Article 12 was a citizen's petition on having the Sunderland Select Board petition the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to allow juveniles ages 16 and 17 to vote in local town elections. Discussing the article were several students from Frontier Regional School who shared their thoughts with the Sunderland residents on why they should support the article. While the three articles garnered much discussion and caused the town meeting to clock in at two hours, the three articles, along with the other 15, were all approved of by the town. A video recording of the entire meeting is available from FCAT on YouTube. Another town meeting that occurred around the same time of Sunderland's was the 2024 Deerfield Annual Town Meeting, which was held on the evening of Monday, April 29th at the Frontier Regional School Auditorium. An estimated 268 Deerfield residents came out to vote on 21 different articles. While 20 of the articles were easily passed without much question or discussion, the final article, Article 21, a citizen's petition on having the Deerfield Select Board petition the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to allow juveniles ages 16 and 17 to vote in local town elections, was not approved by residents. The article lost by three votes. This article happened to be the most contested article of the entire town meeting. It drew much debate from town residents. A video recording of the entire two-hour town meeting is available from FCAT on YouTube. And now for something completely unrelated to town meetings. The Tilton Library has reopened its doors at its temporary location, next door in the parish hall of the former Congregational Church, and has returned to its normal hours of operation. The entrance to the library is located in the rear of the building. Patrons are welcomed with an adult section and also a children's section, both of which can effectively serve the community as construction and renovations commence on the Tilton Library building. As the library is in a smaller temporary space, only a fraction of its catalog is available in physical form to patrons at the moment. For the adult section, only books published within the last six months are displayed and available for borrowing. Certainly, patrons can request other books through the C.W. Myers Library Loan Program. 
In addition to this small selection of books, periodicals, and the library computers are available for adults to use. The children's section has a consolidated catalog, which omits books that are not taken out as frequently, such as non-fiction books and parenting books. Despite the consolidated catalog, many of the library's toys, arts and crafts activities, and Mango the Bearded Dragon are available to children to enjoy. In regards to exciting developments with the Tilton Library renovation and reconstruction, the entranceway which was constructed in 1997 was recently demolished. The removal of this structure, which was put on to provide an office and a handicap entranceway, allows the community to once again view the original brickwork and architecture as envisioned by the Tilton family and its architects. One of the more interesting features of the building is the names of two classic American authors on the side of the building, Whittier and Longfellow. These of course are in reference to John Greenleaf Whittier and Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. For those who may not have ever been aware of this unique feature of the Tilton Library, the opposite side of the building has the names of Emerson and Bryant. This is in reference to Rolf Waldo Emerson and William Cullen Bryant. As construction and renovations progress, the left side of the Tilton will be fully restored, thus bringing a new appreciation of this unique architectural feature and for this wonderful historic building. With the demolition of this entranceway complete, the Tilton site will be prepared for the construction of the new part of the Tilton Library, which will commence on Friday, May 10th at 11 a.m. with a groundbreaking ceremony. And that, my friends, concludes this edition of the FCAT South County Spotlight. I will see you next time.